Welcome, Sojourners. You have found yourself a cozy place here at Sojourners Awake. I'm Jonathan, and this is our production of The Bookish and the Brave. Like you, the Sojourners are on a mission. They face conflict and sometimes even danger. And in this most recent episode, the bookends travel all the way to Zonathar's lair, the lair of the Blue Dragon. What will they uncover as they seek to flush out his horde? Certainly it will not be without incident. And so for now, our story continues. I put myself in your hands, guys. I think it's time we move. Where do you lead the bookends, Vaughn? Uh, Vaughn is going to stand up very definitively and start walking out of the room, uh, encouraging the others to uh, join him. And then Vaughn will say something to the extent of, uh, gather your belongings and let's meet at the gate in a half an hour. Uh, and then we will go, and then he's going to look at uh, Hawkins. Uh, yeah, I, near the entrance of the lair, so we can do some uh, some scouting before we find where we want to set up an ambush. Sounds good. I'll see you in a half an hour. And the bookends prepare. 30 minutes to go. Ascend it in. You gather your belongings. That goes in there, and that, yes, okay, everything just so. Ah, I think that will do. Ah, yes, my handle. He straps the weapon handle to his belt. Gives a sigh as he smells the room and then steps outside to head toward the gate. Eldo walks over and bumps into you. Oh, Sinton! I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. Hilda, my dear, how are you? Doing well, doing well, yes. Um, Listen, I have to say, I'm so very embarrassed. I didn't say anything earlier, but... Uh, and it was just awkward to even talk about it at the time, but earlier, uh, I was walking behind and I thought I'd just stop in and I saw that your door was open and so I thought I'd just let myself in and I heard um some interesting words you were reciting some poetry or uh something to the effect of uh Sterling getting captured and it just it frightened me so much and I just didn't know if it was one of your mere made-up stories or um if uh, is Sterling okay Oh, dear heart, it was simply a fancy, something I've been working on. Oh, cool. that's so good. Oh, it, I'm sorry, I should have said something, but it just, I don't know if you noticed me, and it was just awkward to just, after five minutes of just standing there, I, I thought, I felt like a fool. No need to feel silly. Oh, I should okay. have closed my door. Well, maybe you did. You never know. Fairies and everything. Can you believe the other day the, uh, someone got completely looted, pickpocketed down to their last penny? And they're blaming some kind of pixie or fairy or I don't even know what to make of it or anything, but Bald Top's just not the same. Indeed it is not. Oh, are you are you in a hurry? I had I had well, I, I had some extra apple pie and uh, it's an entire apple pie and I was just coming by to see if if you wanted some. If I can, I, if I can leave it with you. Afraid I do need to meet the bookends at the gate. Yeah, yes, you're a busy man. I understand. Um. Okay. She looks down at the pie. Well. Well, I. I guess I should let you go. It does smell very good, though. Perhaps oh yeah, yeah. One piece wouldn't hurt. Oh well. For the road. For the road. She quickly rushes into your house, knowing exactly where your dining room table is, cuts out a slice of pie, and places it gently in your hands. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's too warm. Uh, yes, oh, yes, yes, it is. Not too warm. And now it's running down my hand. Oh, dear. Oh, let me get you a napkin. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Not the good ones, though, please. Not the good ones. She gives you the good ones. Mm. This is quite good. I appreciate your good work on this. Oh, well, you need to you need to go. Don't just stand around. Uh, oh, the yes. bookends are waiting for you. Yes. Uh, oh, now I'm turned around. Can you point me in the right direction? 
She does so and calls out to you. Please tell Sterling I said hello. Farewell, Hilda. So Sterling, upon getting the marching orders, would run straight to his room and look around a little, and he would uh, demolish all of the not the perishable groceries that he just brought back to his house. <laughs> Shove them all into his mouth as quick as possible. And then he would realize he's quite tired and uh, he doesn't really want to pack. So he would lie down and set a water bubble above his head to disappear in 15 minutes. Figures it took him about 10 minutes to eat, 15 minutes to take a quick nap, and then five minutes to shove things in his bag uh, and, and get on the road. Uh, and it would also be a nice shower, refreshing wake up. Uh, so uh, with that and everything in place, he is, um, yeah, the typical teenager, getting everything, all the boxes checked. He's good to go. Hawkins uh, goes back to his room and has most of his things in order, so it doesn't take him long uh, to prepare everything for, for leaving. Um, he tries to uh, make a quick stop by the helping hands just to let his friends know that he's going out again um and he tries to make it seem i mean he's not he's not on official business definitely not on official business so he's gonna try to play it off as low-key just going out with the bookends for uh, a couple months maybe during wartime well i mean Hey, listen, we're not a bunch of nerds like these people at Bald Top. We got sense. Real sense here, Hawkins. We know what's up. I know. You're doing some dirty work, aren't you? <laughs> and he slaps you on the shoulder. That's rich coming from you. I'm going to have to wash my robes. <laughs> hey, it's, it's nothing but grease. It's good for you. Okay. Now, come on. Tell old man Whiskers what's going on. If I survive, I'll give you all the details. Hey, I might not even survive. <laughs> well, We're at man, war here. Bald you. Top's closed his door. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You're getting out of here. Blow and dodge. You uh, keep your ear to the ground. Come here. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me show you. Let me show you. He goes over, drags you over past this machine and pushes it over to the side. And there's a small little trap door. It opens it up and it leads down to a 80-foot tunnel with a ladder. Always have an escape plan. You better believe me and Leilana ain't going down for this place. We work here. It's not our family. You are a good man, sir. You take care of your family, all right? Yeah. Don't forget about us. Take care of yourself. I'll be back. And uh, even if all the other, even if all the stones of a whole library are knocked down, I'll dig them up and find your door and find you happily inside. You got all the supplies you need and stuff down there? It goes far out into the wilderness. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a place we stay. It just keeps going and going and leads on out into the mountains. Yeah, you know where it is. You follow out that way and I'll leave a little signpost for you letting know which direction we went i'll see you i'll see you later my friend all right hawkins he looks sad hawkins says too put on a brave face vaughn walks uh, back into his apartment and uh says hello brother dogoth uh, how how has your day been so far today uh Freya. Doing quite honestly good. I had just finished cleaning up and I found these. And it's the stack of papers, study notes. Uh, most of them written by Hawkins. Some written by Sterling. Did these belong oh. to you, I believe? Uh, yes, I will take them back. Thank you. And he, uh, he puts them in his bag and he's looking around for Aramonte. She went out, Master uh, Friar Vaughn. If you're looking for Aramonte, she's out um, uh, with some friends, I believe. Uh, Brother Dogoth, um, I know I've been gone quite a bit lately, and and I am grateful for all that you have done uh, 
caring for Aramonte and, and keeping an eye on her as much as you can. Uh, the word is that uh, many people have been losing items recently, and I can't help but think that uh, Aramonte has maybe strayed back to her old ways. Uh, I'm not... I'm not asking you to put yourself in any kind of trouble with her, but uh, if you could keep an eye on her, and uh, if things turn up like he taps the bag, these notes again, um, well, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you and I both, Friar. I, it's if, honestly beside, I'm beside myself, not knowing exactly what to do. I had to share it with you, but to be quite honest, the only reason I don't think she is out on her behind is because you are her father. Well, Brother Dilgoth, maybe I can, uh, maybe I can have a conversation with Skoda on the way out. And... Oh, I, ho I hope Skoda does not know. I do not believe he does. I think just everyone else knows, and it's just a bald top secret. It, uh, well, it may be important for her to learn a lesson beyond, uh, using me as an excuse to be uh, a troublemaker. And from what I've gathered, Skoda is hardline. <laughs> he does not play on a subjective nature. Well, I will, I will leave it to you and your wisdom to, uh, to maybe identify some, uh, some partners here in Bald Top that can help you teach her better manners <laughs> she would not listen to you she would not listen to me forgive me i i understand your request and i will do my best by the order of the clover blade to exact it and i know you will brother dogoth and i say to you that uh however however hard the lesson may be uh i fully support you in your decision to uh to help her learn uh, a better way. And if that means uh, getting Skoda involved and some significant discipline, I I can support that at this point. But uh, uh, unfortunately, I will not be here. I am I am leaving again. Again? And uh, I do not know how long I'll be gone this time. Uh, and as he's, as he's saying this to Brother Dogoth, he's reaching into his closet and grabbing his monk's robes to to bring along. Uh, and that's uh, definitely something that Brother Dogoth, uh, nor anybody else has seen in a very long time. But he's going to he's going to put them in his bag inside the apartment. So Brother Dogoth would see it, but nobody else would see that as he walks out. It's that bad. Well, we spoke briefly and in surface level conversation but yes we we are we are embarking on some very dangerous uh, journeys that and because of because of some issues in our previous uh, endeavors uh, we cannot represent Baltop out there any longer we are uh, we are our own group uh, a covert operators uh, special forces working on behalf of good but no longer on behalf of Baltop. You, you will forgive me for being rude. Oh, there's no forgiveness to be given. Brother Dogoth, I I trust you completely and I know that your heart is for me and and for the good of the Cloverblades and for the good of Baltop and for the good of Boshin and in that, I trust you. Uh, farewell, brother. Uh, care for Aramante as much as you can. And uh, if if it is no longer within your power, then recruit whatever power is necessary to to help her uh, understand right from wrong. He looks solemnly at you. He salutes him uh, in the uh, in the traditional clover blade way and uh, walks out.
Vaughn, your footsteps fall heavy in Bald Top Library. Through the cobblestones you move quickly, but no one catches your haste. Every, everyone bunkering down and speaking quietly in whispers, their eyes darting left and right. With your access, you're e easily able to leave Bald Top's gates by another means, with little to no one noticing you. Outside the gates, you move through the countryside, diverting quickly from the corkscrew highway. As you pass on throughout the night, the cool breeze bringing life back into your mind and your body again, the scent of travel on the air. You see a glow in the horizon, a bright light, ocean, is burning. It's uh, is anyone else getting deja vu? I feel like we've been there before. Now that we're trying to get into the city and not out of it. Uh. How much more can this one city take? I suppose we should at least get close enough to see what's going on, and if there's a way for us to help. Oh, I think you would know what's going on. By Ascendant's message. It seems as if the enemy has turned upon itself. The storehouse has caught fire. Upon the outer gates. It worked! It worked. Oh, what a relief. As you peer over a hill, you see that enemy has turned against enemy in the confusion of night. The clash of sh shields and swords, the blasts of arcanists, the destruction of arson. There is chaos in the ranks. Sterling, did you bring any popcorn? Uh, I, I viewed popcorn as a perishable item in my house, so no, I have much, I already ate it. Um, but uh, well, quite a show the Sons of War put on. Uh, I guess I can see how they got their name. Uh, I think we should stay clear of this. This sounds like a good idea. As you move on through the night, you break southern toward the countryside, staying far away from Boshan and the bright lights. You see the lights of High Keep up into the north, and the hills become higher and stronger and more pronounced as you move through the countryside. Point of clarification, you are going to Zonathar's entrance to scout it, correct? Camping out that night underneath the stars, your body rests. One of you keeps watch. Vaughn, as you sit far away from the camp keeping a watch over your companions you have a moment to yourself an hour in the night two o'clock in the morning how do you spend it Vaughn is going to stay on his feet to make sure that there's no um, no possibility of falling asleep uh, he's going to he's going to quietly walk the perimeter of camp and um, I think his his thoughts are his thoughts are going towards uh, first thinking about the fact that the storerooms are on fire, which means that the letter we sent worked or delivered worked, and then wondering if uh, just this tiny bit of hope he allows to creep in that maybe those guards, the guard and the messenger, died or something, or they never found them, and that there's a uh, that we didn't actually get sold out and everything's okay. And then the reality that um, the possibility of that happening is so slim that it is very, very unlikely that uh, that they don't know by now that that was a false note. And so he gets disappointed again. And then uh, as the disappointment kicks in, he starts thinking about Aramonte and um, 
and he goes a little deeper into that uh, frustration, sadness, wondering what the heck, turns into anger because he starts thinking about Trina and, you know, this is all her fault. And, uh, and then starts blaming himself about uh, not being a good enough father and allowing Aramante to become this monster that she's becoming or maybe always was. So he's just, yeah, he's just going down this rabbit hole and uh, he uh, uncharacteristically trips on a tree root and it, it jars his brain and he realizes where he's allowed himself to go and, uh, and quickly uh, takes a look back at the party, uh, all sleeping soundly and um, brings his thoughts back around to uh, the mission at hand and starts thinking about uh, what it looks like to creep closer to that entrance, um, starts thinking tactically about um, where, where would be the best place to approach from, um, how can they build a lookout to, to see how things move and, and all the different things that are going on. And, um, and he starts, starts working on strategy for the next step. Later on that morning, the bookends are walking through the countryside yet again over rocky outcroppings, sometimes going straight up, sometimes descending in the hillside. Soon enough, you see that notorious peak in the mountain, the layer of Zonathar now within your sight, and a long winding entrance, a long winding pathway up to an entrance in the cavern, an entrance in the mountainside. This is a mountainous region on a ridge. And as you creep softly, quietly, and expectedly, you notice that there are small diminutive figures that are shuttling a few supplies, carts, rickety supplies, these kobolds, little creatures, these gremlins that are shuttling supplies back and forth. There are about five or seven of them moving up the hill, chattering amongst themselves, going into the lair. You have a few questions as you sense this location. Hawkins, what are you paying attention to? Is there a sign that heavy carts travel around this area. Indeed there are. Hawkins is not interested in getting much closer to the lair, um, but I guess making a making a circle around to try to locate all the possible paths. I presume there aren't many since this is so mountainous. There are many ways that a cart could go, but he wants to make sure that they account for all the all the trails. Indeed, you will make a survival check. You are breaking away from the party if you would like a 13 or higher. From this distance with your eyesight, it'll be an 18 or higher. And quite honestly, and I'm glad you're thinking this way, Brandon, the further we are from the entrance to the lair, the less likely we are to disturb the dragon. So I, I like setting up further back. Yep. So not, not attempting to approach anymore. That's not gonna do it. 18 or higher? No. Okay. You do see that there is one primary path that leads from the valley all the way up to the mountain, and it looks like a well-worn travel trail of wagons, wheels. As far as any other entrances, it's possible that there are some other pathways and scouting, but at this safe location, you cannot see. Ascendaton. I think he, uh, I think Ascendaton is basically going to sit down on a rock and just open up his senses again. There's really little he can do here. And so he is going to listen for sounds of activity. Obviously the road is going to be full of noise. So he's focusing his attention in other directions. Smell, sound, even just general instinct. He's trying to see if he can locate anything in the echoing expanse of the mountains here. Please roll a perception check. You need an 18 or higher from this location. You're asking a lot of me here. I rolled an 18 plus 24. 
Ascendatin, as you sit there on that rock, opening up all your senses, you hear the sound of your breathing start to slow. Suddenly you hear the sound of clicking, like a mechanical sound, something that Hawkins would be playing with. And it's up on the right side of the hill, on the right side of the entrance. It sounds like someone is fidgeting with something off the path, off of the path leading to the main entrance. Am I able to determine what might be causing the clicking, or is it just too far away to... It, not what's causing it, but it's rhythmically clicking. I see. And does it sound metallic, wooden, stone? Metallic. Metallic. I... Do you hear that? It's a click, 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 click. I... Do you, can you make that out? Or is it just me? In the silence, Sterling, I believe you can hear it as well. Yeah, Sterling would look which way he's inclined his ear. And he that's what he's looking around the mouth of the, the cave, specifically for um, the numbers, the movements, the, you know, the creatures, see if there's anyone in charge, anyone organizing. Uh, and then now that he's pointed out that clicking, he's paying attention. If you would roll a perception check, 18 or higher with advantage. Yeah, I got a 25. You see that there is a path. It seems like someone has carved off a path to the right and it leads behind the hill with no discernible end point. Do I see what's making that clicking noise? Oh, it's behind um, the hill. Um, yes, I, I, I do hear it, Ascendant, and I I see there is a path that it leads behind the hill, and I fear we would have to get closer. I, I say we, but we all know who's going to get closer. And Vaughn, what do you pay attention to? Vaughn is looking uh, at the cover on the hills, uh, trying to figure out which uh, back which which side path or uh, side area of brush and trees and such would be the would be the best for him to uh, to sneak towards the entrance if there was a need to get up there and uh, and accomplish uh, tasks. How how wooded is the area around the paths? Um, where where the paths converge? Uh, at what point would they be in? in plain sight for the kobolds or anybody else that was around. Uh, he's just researching um, the topography to make sure that he knows what's, and, and the foliage, just to make sure he knows what what the right course of action is uh, if and when the time comes for, for him to sneak up. What you strategically determine is that it is going to be a series of three checks to get all the way to the main entrance. It is going to be only two checks to get around where Sterling is pointing towards. It's a series of wood, wooded areas. Um, there's a little bit of trees that one could scout behind very quickly. Seems like you could make it. And if you make it with a certain level of clump, then you would be have a leg up on anyone who might sneak up on you. As far as obstacles, the main entrance it seems that the traffic of kobolds is pretty consistent in and out like little ants they move from the mound it looks like i can sneak around to where you were pointing sterling uh, it, it'll be a challenge to get to the front without being seen by kobolds yes i think that that clicking has got a intrigue up too as to what it could be so i yes i we are with you Ascendaton, do you have, uh, can you discern what the clicking sound could be? Do I know what I'm looking for? Let me see. Uh, no, it, it just sounds metallic, but it's so distant, I, I can't make out anything. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't have anything that would help me with this. No, that's fine. Um, I can go and research and, and report back. I just didn't know if, uh, if you could discern anything that would be helpful to me. I don't know. Let me look into the sky for a moment. 
And what are you looking for? The DM to say whether or not I can. Oh. <laughs> no. Like said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You cannot. It's no, metallic. There, there's, there's nothing I can tell you more. My best guess would be maybe some kind of ratchet mechanism on like mine carts moving up or something along those lines, but I I can't hear it myself. I, that, you know, metallic clinking sound is kind of lost on my ears. You've been playing with too many explosives again. Something like that. Vaughn, how do you proceed? Uh, yeah, Vaughn's going to... Uh... Vaughn's going to sneak out. First of all, just to be make sure that we're clear, Vaughn has switched out of his uh, indigo robes, and he is in his monk's robe. I think we're all in street clothes. That's a good indication. Thank you. And Vaughn is going to uh, Vaughn is going to start sneaking. You make two stealth checks, fifteen or higher. Uh, first one is a seventeen. Second one is a twenty-four. You watch. Well, you don't watch. Vaughn disappears. Then you see him 40 yards ahead behind a pine tree, moving his head, waiting for the coast to clear. And then without leaving a trace, Vaughn, you move over around the hills and the clicking sound starts to become more pronounced. You hear it getting closer. It's indeed metallic, something like a minecart. It almost sounds like it's increasing in tension and ratcheting up. You're behind a brush. And in line of, and in the sound becomes so prominent that you know that as soon as you pop over this series of briars and brambles, you will come envisioned to the sound, the source of the sound. Do you proceed? Yeah, yeah absolutely. You would All sneak right. sneak to see. You sneak to see, and when you go around to the side, you see that there is a group of kobolds four of them and they indeed have some kind of large device that is metallic and they're cranking something up ratcheting it ratcheting it ratcheting it and you see that on one tail end of this metallic item there is a long tail and that tail has a spark on it it starts to hiss Please make a dexterity saving throw. You're going for 15 or higher. 10. The three of you hear the ground rumble, shaking beneath your feet, and the two of you see a splash of dirt and rock as this massive explosion blows up right around the area that you saw Vaughn go towards. Uh, Vaughn, you take 40 points of shrapnel damage as rocks and debris and everything peppers you. Flat on your back, you land and your ears are ringing. Dust is in the air. Splattered remains of a kobold leg lay at your feet. Splattered on the ground next to your body. We must go. Yeah, as soon as the explosion went, I think Hawkins was running toward uh, Vaughn. Now, Sinditon is obviously going to be lagging behind, moving through this tough off-road terrain. Um, so he's basically going to be twice as long to get there, I think, at least. I think, yeah, Sterling being a little shell-shocked would be staying next to Sinditon. All right. Hawkins, you're first on the scene as you move grace well, move gracefully up this hill with no count for st stealth in it all. This has definitely created some sort of distraction. You arrive. Um, I do need you to make a perception check. Just a, let's do a nine or higher to see if you can spot Vaughn. Seven. You run right past him and you go to the source of this explosion and you see that in the side of the mountain, a brand new entrance has been made. It seems like some tunneling had taken place for so long and this explosion had finished off the job, creating an entrance. And you look over to the left and you see that half of a creature is just lying on the ground, burnt and charred to a crisp. And you are now standing, and you are now standing in the center of a crater. How do you respond? 
Um, Hawkins is going to go over to the limb or whatever part of the body is left. Doesn't look like it's quite the right size to be Vaughn's, but it's also in really bad shape. He's going to, I mean, like panic rising fast. He's going to rush over to it and, you know, look around for other parts of the body. It's, it's pretty grisly. Make a medicine check. See okay. if you can piece together an entire kobold. Five. Five. Uh, you find a bit of jaw, a bit of entrail, and a piece of metal. Nice shrapnel of metal. And it's got a bit of Vaughn's robe attached to it. Sterling, in Ascendaton, you are moving slowly up this hill quietly, or cautiously and carefully. The rumbling has ceased, the sound has stopped. How do you proceed? Slowly. <laughs> yeah. uh, and carefully, and as he goes, Ascendaton is keeping his ears open for any sound in the stillness that has descended after the echoes have faded away. And Sterling is keeping a close eye. I see if the kobolds were expecting that explosion, or if uh, there is movement and chatter. There is movement and chatter, but it is not a fear, is it, of, it is of excitement. A little mm. bit of pointing and then carrying on with business as usual. Maybe a little bit of clapping occurs as one gobold just laughs and starts cackling on the ground, rolling and hugging his sides. Vaughn, how do you proceed? So Vaughn, um, being being the evasive and, el and elusive guy he is, um, didn't take as much of that shrapnel as as um you would expect i think he um i think he caught maybe caught a larger piece that would have hit him in the face kind of like a deflecting a missile type idea and um and then was able to spin out of the way which allowed some of that shrapnel to catch his robe and tear a few pieces off of his robe as it flew past so vaughn um Vaughn, after he hit the ground, would have immediately scrambled into a different location, um, maybe 20, 30, 40 feet away from where he was um, to hide and try to take in what just happened, but from a different perspective in case somehow something saw him in that spot. Because he's not exactly sure what happened. He just heard the explosion got knocked down and and cut up a little bit so he's taking it all in from about 40 feet away Hawkins as Vaughn stands up you see him in the dust you also hear voices grunts of orcish nature beginning to sound in that cavern that has just been made um Wow. Uh, Hawkins is feeling all the feels right now. <laughs> um, uh, I think he's going to be shocked for a moment um, before he gets his act together and rushes back to the, the nearest cover he can, um, indicating uh, with, with gestures that everyone needs to hide. Because I hear, you hear things back in there and we need to get down all right due to hawkins leadership everyone make a stealth check get an 11 or higher please hawkins i think you automatically succeed 13 See? and sterling 10 i said that 10 turns. or higher right no, you said 11 or higher oh my gosh oh. <laughs> okay hawkins you motion for everyone to get down and you dive behind a brush vaughn you instinctively put your back up against a tree once again, your chest heaving, you're listening and you hear the sounds of the orcs getting closer and closer. Ascendaton, you just drop straight to the ground. Land in a brush. You feel Ascendaton's hand pull away from you, Sterling. Stand up, move to one direction, move to the other, get caught between two hiding spots, and then they spot you. Two orcs grunt at your direction, 30 yards away, pull out their scimitars, and are calling out to you in an orcish language, of which do you happen to speak? 
They seem hostile, though they may be asking a question. You have a second to respond, but they do not look friendly. I think Sterling would point at himself and then run away. And they give chase. Two orcs chase after you. Go ahead and make a dexterity check to see if you're light on your feet. 12 or higher, please. That would be a three. Sterling, you go tripping and you tumble down the hill. The orcs are now like bracing both their legs, chasing after you, calling after. And one of them has a horn. He is starting to blast it. Vaughn. Does Vaughn see these orcs giving chase? Yeah, they just ran past you. Oh, yeah. Vaughn's going to, at, at, at whatever opportunity he has, as soon as they are past him, he's going to jump up and do what he can to, uh, to um, attack these guys. Actually, he'd probably, uh, he'd probably shoot a couple arrows at them. You got two targets. What you going to do? Uh, he's going to shoot at um he's gonna shoot at each one to uh to try to uh slow them down so okay they're in motion 15 or higher oh my gosh that is a uh, 13 and a natural one you go to you go to reach for your arrows and your quiver is gone. It's must have got lost in the shrapnel and the blast. Hawkins. Uh, seeing Vaughn's uh, thought to shoot, he's going to try shooting as well. Um, he's going to charge up um, two bolts. Uh, with his with the power pack in his arm and shoot them uh, in the with using the same effect that he did uh, with the courier this time they will actually have to make a strength saving throw um, the the idea here is that if the bolt hits uh, it sends an electric shock that temporarily paralyzes the legs of the creature I should have explained that last time that's what's happening 15 or higher the first one is a 10. The second one is a 23. All right. For that first one, um, Sterling is going to fall in a certain direction and try and make him kind of lurch. Um, and using his um, wheel uh, ability, add a d6 to that roll. Cool. We'll see. It's a three, so I don't to hit, but... 10, right? Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> it alters the shot. It makes it a little bit closer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, so that's... Uh, that's a DC 14 strength check from the work. A uh, natural one. So it falls prone. Okay. And it takes... Uh, six... 13 points of damage. It is paralyzed and it shocks and it lands on the ground face planting and just tumbles down and lies still with its head hitting a rock. The other one's still giving pursuit. But the question is, did you hit the one with the horn or not? I'll let a d6 decide. A one, two, three. You hit the one with the horn. It's a three. And the horn smashes against the rock, and his friend, uh, his ally, continues to give pursuit. Ascendant is your turn, though, but the the alarm has been silenced. I'm going to use, not knowing really exactly where he is, I'm going to use dissonant whispers. Uh, the the fleeing orc will need to make a wisdom saving throw against the DC of fifteen. Seven. All right. It's going to be 3d6 damage. 10 points of damage. And he needs to use his 
uh, reaction, if available, to move as far as his speed allows away from me. So that's not really helping things any. But the spirit of it is a confusion. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. Okay. What do you say? You're so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Even your mother doesn't want to look at you. The orc then is looking to the left and seeing his ally fall to the ground with the bolt. And suddenly these voices racking in his head causes him to stumble. And he tumbles downhill, rolling past you, Sterling, slamming up against a tree and holding his head, looking at you with wild eyes, cursing. And indeed, he is ugly. Sterling, it is your turn. Uh, Sterling would regain his feet um, and uh, seeing that stealth is still the name of the game yeah he's just going to uh, walk up uh, with his staff and try and silence him by shoving it in his face uh, while casting shillelagh on his uh, staff as well and he will get a 16 that's good Beautiful. Yep, indeed. And then he will do... Yeah, he's going to do a seven points of damage. That's a lot. You make him uglier. <laughs> and that is his turn. Well, Sterling, you stand over the fallen orc. The one that Hawkins has paralyzed is unconscious for the moment. Bookins, you have quelled the alarm. As you glance up back to that hill, that cavern, you see no activity for now. And all the activity on the entrance has ceased and gotten quiet. Seems like time is in your favor at this moment. How do you proceed? I think in light of our agreement uh, just a couple days ago, we're going to quickly silence um, the orcs. Vaughn is looking for his quiver. I think you can find it in this moment. It is located off to the side. Uh, Hawkins, knowing that orcs often are cannibalistic and definitely would eat you for dinner, you immediately silence this creature with a bolt. With another shot, the other one is silenced as well. As for the bodies? Uh, drag them out of plain sight. I don't think we're going to spend, well... Hawkins isn't planning to spend any more time than getting them out of sight. They'll be discovered eventually, but mm. there was also an explosion. So, in fact, maybe we rough them up a little bit more. Sounds kind of gruesome, but... You have some shrapnel and you decorate it as, as if the explosion had taken part of them off, dismembering them in certain aspects. Vaughn, you're up the hill, highest up the hill, and you can see the entrance where your quiver has snapped off a little bit um, with a quick repair you're able to put together the uh, quiver strap back together how do you proceed if Vaughn feels like he has still stayed hidden from from any of the uh, monsters he is going to resume his uh, his hiding undercover um, and maybe even try to creep to wherever he can get the best angle to look inside and see what's going on. Vaughn, when you approach the cave, you hear no sounds, uh, but you can see that the rock around you is freshly blown up to bits. Looking inside, there is one torch that is flickering and something like a mine cart full of gold. And no creatures anywhere around. It's they've quite, all been, they've yeah. all been blown up. <laughs> They've all been blown up, and the two the two wardens you have already dispatched now did did I see did I see that tail quote unquote that they with the ratchet was pulling? It was a a wick. Got it. okay. All right, so would Vaughn have any idea what? I mean, what was what was happening? They were just trying to op make another opening. Yes, they blew open of another opening with a bomb. Got it. And then, um, 
And so then there was a cart on the other end of this opening, presumably so that they can start then preparing more trails for these carts to come out a different direction. Indeed. Okay, so Vaughn, um, if there's no activity, I think Vaughn will make his way back to the other, the rest of the party and let them know what he saw. It looks like that explosion was another opening into the mountain and they have a cart of gold sitting right there already. Uh, this could be our opportunity to uh, to do our first uh, efforts of uh, taking away some of this loot and slowing down the the progress. How much gold is there? Uh, a full cart, um, more than more than we can carry in our pockets. I'm not sure what to do with it. I guess I hadn't really thought of that. <laughs> well, uh, if we're still pretty well hidden and nobody has detected us, we could bury it somewhere nearby so that it's out of the way and masked by all the dust. I like that thought. I... Maybe maybe I'll sneak in there and see how easy it is to move I the cart. nothing else, you could just sort of, I mean, either push it back in or push it down the mountain to, it'll go somewhere. Very true. Vaughn will sneak, try to sneak back over, and if uh, if all seems quiet, he's going to try to uh, progress the the cart out of the out of the ca- out of the cave and um, down towards where the guys are, if if that's a thing. Making sure not to push right at them in case it in case gravity takes over. You are pushing the minecart of gold out of the second entrance and down the hill to the rest of the bookends. Correct? That's the goal towards the rest of the bookends, but not directly at them. This will be a little bit of a strength challenge then. Use your athletics. 11 or higher. Gee whiz, that die is not friendly today. I got a five. You do push it down the hill. (laughs) Back into the uh, Unfortunately, lose track for a little bit. The mine cart just not having as much grip, and it slips, and your feet give way, and it just bumps, bumps, and the rest of you just see this cart crash right into a tree, topple over, and the gold just lying everywhere in the middle of the countryside. Still, you're very obscured at this point in brushes and trees and outcroppings of rock. All right, we did it. Let's go hide. (laughs) Hawkins, you're able to count that this gold is one one hundredth of the rumored hoardings of Zonathar. 99 more times to go. So Sterling's now dusted himself off and he's walking back up the hill to his friends and he's just quietly slapping himself on the head going, training, training, training. I will get with Vaughn when I get back. If we ever make it out of this. Training, training, training. Every story comes to an ending, so for now, we must conclude. Thank you for listening, Sojourners. Your attention will not go unrewarded. And we look forward to continuing this adventure. If you enjoyed this background music and ambiance, you should visit Tabletop Audio. Find them at www.tabletopaudio.com. And if you'd like to support the show, you can go to ko-fi.com. For every donation I receive, I will award one free re-roll for the Sojourners. That could have come in really handy during this episode. But however you choose to sojourn with us, as always, may your story continue.